today we'll talk about uh, laser hair removal the desire to look good is as old as a human being itself as the saying goes uh, the desire this desire has boosted the uh, million dollar industry today and removal of unwanted hair first started with the use of sharp stone earlier they used to use sharp stone to remove unwanted hair now it has come a long way with the use of lasers these days depilation and epilation both of that are done for hair removal uh, lasers have uh, have actually been started using for hair removal since the 1960s it's a news and the first therapeutic use was for a condition called strichiasis in 1995 fda approved india laser for treatment of um, hair removal mechanism of action principle uh, the principle of laser removal uh, is the light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation another principle is selective photothermolysis and then we have extended theory of selective photothermolysis on which the laser hair removal basically works uh, so this laser has uh, the device has a power source it has a power source which goes inside this lasing medium this is inside everything will be inside the laser system itself so this is the lasing medium uh, through which this light is actually sent and out comes the laser output so this is the laser output which comes outside of the laser device that we see the light that we see so inside the laser medium normally uh, any atom has uh, proton in the center and a uh, this is positively charged and neutral neutron will be there and surrounding this will have electrons which are negatively charged so the force between the protons and the electron keeps the new atom in a stable state so what happens when exposure uh, to light or any energy source this electron from this uh, lower state moves into a higher orbit an outer orbit and this is uh, when the atom is unstable now and to become stable it will again move back to its original orbit and when it moves back to its original orbit it releases photons or energies and this photons or energy is seen as the light that we see in laser so this method is used for producing laser light numerous electrons like that will be present inside the lasing medium producing these photons which causes a beam of light coming out of it and that is the uh, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation we give this power source to excite these electrons and then when they return back they release the photons and that laser light itself is used for our uh, treatment purposes here there's also this uh, selective photothermolysis which basically says that only the target has to be destroyed in laser systems so the targets in the skin for laser would be we have water as a target hemoglobin as a target and melanin as a target these targets are nothing but the chromophores which on which the laser light acts an artificial chromophore for example would be the tattoo pigment laser light is also used for removing tattoos so the tattoo pigment itself acts as a chromophore or the target for the laser light in the normal skin we have water hemoglobin melanin which acts uh, here as the chromophore in the laser hair removal when it comes to hair removal we target melanin this melanin is present in the hair so we target this melanin in the hair for uh, destroying the hair follicle and uh, only the pigmented hair that's why it can be treated with laser hair removal effectively as melanin is present in only the pigmented hair so selectively only we have to target this and not the surrounding tissue is what the selective photothermolysis says and uh, the electromagnetic width that we choose and the wavelength and the fluency that we choose has to be uh, so that only the hair follicle is affected not the surrounding tissue as the wavelength increases uh, that's to be noted as the wavelength increases the depth of penetration of the laser light also increases so this even the epidermis has got melanin and the hair follicle also has got melanin so we have to target only the uh, hair follicle melanin or the epidermal melanin to prevent this we need a deeper penetration for deeper penetration we need a higher wavelength so the suitable wavelength also has to be used and the energy that we use per centimeter square which is the fluency also needs to be important to damage the target tissue here extended theory sometimes uh, what happens uh, this is where an a weakly absorbing part has to be destroyed by the heat diffusion from a highly absorbing part uh, called the heater or the absorber here the weak target here is the hair follicle whereas the high absorber is the melanin bearing structures like the hair shaft and hair matrix so when these structures which absorb uh, the laser light to a higher extent they will diffuse their energy through heat to uh, to the hair follicle and then the hair follicle will be destroyed this is the extended theory of um, uh photothermolysis okay and also it's to be noted that, that anagen has has got maximum number of melanosomes so the hair removal basically works uh, effectively in anagen has when the stage of the hair cycle is in anagen not in the catagen or in the telogen phase certain parameters to be considered are the wavelengths of the laser light the fluence the spot size the pulse duration of pulse width the cooling and number of sittings or sessions that is required for hair removal 
wavelength of laser light if we see uh, several wavelengths have been used for hair removal we have ruby 694 alexandrite these are all the crystals which are used inside the lasing medium then we have alexandrite 755 nanometer pulse diode laser commonly used 890 810 nanometer then we have india india which is 1064 ideal wavelength for the laser hair removal would be uh, between 690 to 1000 nanometer as uh, the absorbing uh, chromophores uh, the competitors for melanin like the water and the oxyhemoglobin is eliminated or it's very uh, less at uh, this wavelength so melanin wavelength would be uh, between 690 to 1000 nanometer any laser under this uh, in this particular um, uh, wavelength can be used higher wavelength is used to target the chromophore melanin because it has to reach the hair follicle so this uh, breaches the hair follicle and destroys it effectively then we have fluence also fluence is the amount of energy per unit area of the target tissue which is expressed as joules per centimeter square of the area higher height has to be high enough to cause maximum destruction of the hair follicle it has to be low enough also to decrease any epidermal side effects also so that um, range has to be kept in mind fluence can be increased by effective cooling before during and after the pulse is given the pulse is nothing but the shot that we give the laser shot so to uh, maintain that particular fluency you can use cooling as a method to increase the fluency as well also we have spot size of the laser which is important larger is the spot size greater will be the penetration so if greater is the penetration then it will re effectively reach the hair follicle and destroy the hair follicle okay so here you can see the larger spot size has reached uh, to a greater extent whereas the small spot size has not reached to such a great extent here okay and pulse duration of pulse width um, it's the amount of time uh, from uh, through which the laser energy is applied uh, or the duration of exposure of the target tissue to the electromagnetic radiation or the laser light um, that is amount of energy amount of time in which you give the pulse q switch lasers have got short pulses that may induce chem thermal destruction of the melanosomes but they may not effectively damage the follicular tissue so that's another other disadvantage here longer pulses will not only heat the melanosome gently but also allow thermal conduction from melanosome to the surrounding follicular structure causing effective destruction so longer pulses um, a better option here so longer pulse duration would be good ideal would be around 10 to 50 milliseconds can be used so longer pulse duration has gone deeper and destroyed it completely then we have cooling effective cooling is again a very important thing in laser hair removal better cooling of the less epidermal injury so if you cool the tissue before giving the pulse and after giving the pulse it will effectively prevent any epidermal injury and uh, more fluency also can be used with this and it produces it gives us increased efficacy of the treatment as well for cooling we can use cool sapphire or copper window or air cooling or external application of cryogen spray cooling jellies or ice packs can be used for cooling of the skin before the procedure and after the procedure as well number of sittings that are required for allergen hairs it has got maximum melanosome so allergen hairs are mostly effective around 10 to uh, 6 to 10 sittings are required it depends upon the thickness of the hair the site wherein it is removed all of that and it varies from patient to patient so when you are uh, telling a patient about this make sure you tell them clearly that it might range from 6 to 10 and it might be less or it might be more also sometimes factors which affect the outcome of the laser hair removal it depends upon the hair color and the skin type of the patient the type of hair that we are treating if the patient has any hormonal imbalances also the site through from which we are removing the hair also matter here so the hair color and the skin type if you are seeing about that light skin and dark hair is best suited for laser hair removal because here light skin people will have less epidermal melanin and dark hair will have more melanin in the hair follicle thereby will be damaging effectively the hair follicle without causing any epidermal injury so this is one of the very good combinations to treat hair uh, removal okay then higher fluency less epidermal damage short pulse duration needs to be used absorption uh, happens at the follicular melanin level type of the hair again anagen hair is important here and 10 to 15% hair will be in keratogen or telogen so you can't remove all the 100% hair at one sitting so this happens and terminal hair is better uh, affected with laser than the vellus hair because of more pigment again hormones if the patient has any hormonal issues like hyoscyatism or hormonal assays need to be done that has to be treated along with the laser hair removal as well testosterone levels in them has to be checked and treated accordingly site of hair removal it's it is said that axilla and bikini areas respond better than the arms and the chest for laser hair removal indications so uh, laser hair removal is mostly done in hyoscyatism and hypotrichosis in for cosmetic purposes for therapeutic purposes and for grafted hair bearing flaps it is done 
कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेशन नॉट डन विद इन चिल्ड्रन लेस दैन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स इन हाइपोट्रोफिक इन कीलॉडल स्कारिंग हिस्ट्री इफ द पेशेंट हैज डोंट गो फॉर इट एंड इफ द पेशेंट हैज एन एक्टिव इन्फेक्शन ऑफ द लोकल साइट लाइक हाइपर सिम्प्लेक्स वायरस ऑफ स्टेफिलोकल इन्फेक्शन डोंट गो फॉर इट इफ द पेशेंट इज ऑन एस्पेरन और एंटीकॉगलेन इट इफ द एक्सपेक्टेशन इज टू हाई फ्रॉम द पेशेंट साइट एंड इफ द पेशेंट इज अनविलिंग टू कॉपरेट दैन नो यूज ऑफ डूइंग दिस सुपरफिशियल वूंस इन द प्रोसीजरल एरिया शुड अवॉइड एंड सोरेस इन विटलिगो कैन अकर एट द साइट बिकॉज ऑफ कॉबनर्स फिनोमिनल management pre procedure and patient selection adequate history to rule out any infection scarring history drug history needs to be taken topical retinoids used in a treatment area should be stopped one or two days prior to laser tre- treatment physical examination need to be done determine the skin and the type of the hair and determine which laser which laser parameter which laser is suitable for the patient hormonal evaluation needs to be done if the patient has any hirsutism uh, sunscreens four to six weeks prior to the procedure again help in the expo sites bleaching of the hair is avoided plucking waxing electrolysis of the hair 6 weeks prior it's to be stopped patient counseling is important test patch may be tried before doing the actual uh, treatment now if you should, you should take an informed consent obviously and clinical photograph before and after treatment to know the efficacy to check for the efficacy shave the area day prior to the procedure to avoid any pain procedure you have to clean the local area with soap and water to remove any uh, to, to remove other creams uh, ornaments liniments or the makeups that the patient is using and position the patient in treatment or the chair in the treatment chair or the table and emla cream that is the topical anesthetic is applied um, 30 minutes to 1 hour under occlusion cooling jellies ice packs cryogens need to be ready safety goggles for the patient as well as for the operator the presence of any metallic or reflecting object should be avoided in the vicinity of the laser beam so as to avoid any untoward side effects appropriate parameters of the lasers need to be selected press the hand piece gently and firmly perpendicularly to the skin to decrease the blood supply to the local area also to bring the follicles closer to the skin surface okay post procedure ice packs need to be used to reduce swelling and pain topical antibiotics avoid sun exposure use of sunscreens again is a very important topical steroids can be used for short duration if there is local erythema or swelling this is the post procedure thing adverse effects of laser sometimes can be burning scarring so it can be pigmentary changes post treatment erythema can be seen that is reduced with effect of cooling pain purpura ocular complication paradoxical hypertrichosis sometimes can be seen so certain laser systems that are in use are we have this ruby laser um which is epi laser e2000 epi pulse ruby to be star it delivers red light at wavelength of 694 and more effective in light skin individuals this is with dark hair long pulsed alexandrite laser wavelength is 755 nanometer it has got greater penetrance and safer in darker skin types diode laser is a 810 nanometer and it has got deeper penetrance better fluence and less epidermal damage neodymium yttrium aluminum garnet laser it has got 1064 nanometer wavelength and good penetrance more effective in darker skin tones you can use this because there will be deeper penetration because of the increased wavelength so less epidermal damage again because they will have increased melanin in the epidermis So this was a pre and post procedure picture of a patient with hypertrichosis on the chin and that's cleared here. Again a patient here it's been cleared here. Intense pulse light laser also can be used. Um, these are high intensity pulses of non coherent light in a range of 500 to 1200 nanometer. Here the laser beam is uh, polychromatic and non coherent whereas normal lasers would be monochromatic and coherent. This is the ultra of that and uh, these use uh, different filters for different penetration dark tones and larger areas can be treated with intense pulse light system. Combination therapy also is effective for hair removal. Uh, that is, underlying hyoceticism, hypertrichosis need to be addressed along with the treatment here. TCOs, if there, that has to be treated. Topical efflornithin cream. That is, um, the cream can be used topically for uh, when where where it causes irreversible inhibition of L ornithin or decarboxylase. Again, reduces hair growth. That can be used along with treating them with laser. Uh, combination of this cream again with laser can be used. if the light hair white hair and gray hair needs to be treated um, combined light or bipolar radio frequency devices along with the use of photosensitizers are available now and external application of melanin to the hair uh, through liposomal technology has been tried to treat these uh, light or white colored or gray colored hair